Right, good morning guys. Welcome back to the channel and to another video. Uh, today, we're doing something a little bit different. Uh, we're going back fertilizer spinning. If you've seen the last few videos, you'll have seen we've been pretty busy on silaging. So the rake is still on my tractor here. So we're gonna uh, drop that one off, hook the spinner up, and then we're going to try and spread some variable rate nitrogen on some, uh, some of our crops here. So that is the plan. First thing we need to do is get this rake off, hook up the spinner, put the weight on, fill up the spreader, and uh, go and give it a go. The rake's fairly easy to take off, it just has this one big stand here. Um, there are some wheel chocks if you want to put them in, but the stand will be absolutely fine for now. Power shaft, couple hoses, uh, and one electric cable. So we'll get to doing that. Right, got the electrics out of here. That has a little magnet on the bottom, so put it out of the weather. Right, last thing to do. Unpinch the bolt. We'll let the link arms down, so just that, pull that pin. Now just before we hook the spreader up, I thought I'd show you uh, this. So these are the files that I want to import. Um, we made these on the John Deere Operation Center on the computer, um, on the Agrian program I think it's called. So these are just uh, hand-drawn areas of maps that we want to spread more or less fertilizer on. So I think if I press cancel, you go to your file manager um, on your John Deere screen, and then you'll have these options of data sync, import, export, or delete down this side here. Um, so we're gonna go import. We sent the files direct from the computer to this tractor, uh, which you can do through the John Deere link. So they come up here saying there's two files to import. I've already imported four of them, so we click next. Pick the ones you want to import, so on there, press next. And it's a prescription, so you press import, and it does it. And then, I don't know why you can't select all six to do it once, but um, do the last one there a minute. So in theory now, all of the uh, prescription files I want for the variable rate spreading are on the um, John Deere system. So what we'll do, hook the spreader up, fill it up, put the weight on and then we'll go out to the field and when we want to start we'll try and figure out getting the prescription loaded up onto the screen. I think I know how to do it but um, until we do it we don't know. Right we are in the first field. Um, it's a little bit windy as you can see but I think we'll be alright for spreading the fertilizer. Now this is going to be a learning curve for me as well as you guys because I've never done this before. So what we're going to do we're in the field that we're in here on the map but what I want to do is go to work setup, so press menu, applications, uh, work setup, and where it says target rate here, um, we're going to click on there and click RX, which is your prescription. Uh, do I have to click in that box? Current location, all prescriptions, Longlands East. <coughs> Additional information is required to use the shape file. Rate column units with no GPS rate. Okay. Now, I don't know what any of this means, so I guess we'll use that one. Kilograms per hectare. Target rate to be applied when no GPS signal is available. So we'll put in the base rate, which is 145. Out of zone rate. So what's this? Target rate to be applied when out of the zone specified by the prescription. I guess we'll also put the target rate of 145. Field. Longlands East. So we'll press save. So ha, ah, there's the map look. So these are only drawn freehand on the computer for the bits that look good from an NDVI image. What I mean by that is Bruce adds 
flown the drone over all of the ground around the buildings here, along with Alice. And they do a, take an NDVI image um, of the grass and of the crops here. And it gives you a map based on, I think it's on plant health. So basically how green the um, crops look. So basically speaking in the oaks behind us here, the darker green the crops look, the more healthy they should be in theory. Um, and then the poorer the crop is a bit, you know, it looks stressed, it's yellowy and, and that kind of thing. So using the information from the NDVI image um, that we had uh, in the office, we have that on one screen in the computer. On the other screen we have the John Deere operations open with our field maps. And we can draw on there using the Agrian part of John Deere operations center to um, map parts of the field. You can then assign a rate of fertilizer to the different parts of the field. So you make like three or four zones. So this field, just for an example, we've just got two zones. So the middle of the field is really quite good and strong. So we're gonna put that at a slightly lower rate to the outside, which is gonna get the target rate of 145. So you can see here, uh, min, max, uh, and there you are. So you can see the minimum rate, which will be this big blue bit, we'll get 116. And the max rate will be 145 for all these little blue bits around the outside, which are looking a bit poorer. So we press OK. Press OK again. And now, this is all new to me. So this is a different color now. So how this will work when we start, I don't know. I guess there's only one way to find out. So we'll give it a go. So, would you believe it? It actually worked. I didn't bother filming it, just in case it wouldn't. At least I'm honest. Um, but it works, so we're going to carry on and do the rest. I've also got this to show you. So Craig's made me a knife on a stick, so I haven't got to stand underneath the bag lifter anymore for uh, cutting the bags. So I can stand out to the side, sort of lever it into the bottom of the bag. Bit of a two-handed job. So, all loaded up again now. Full to the brim. Uh, we'll get rid of those bags. Yeah, it's a bit of a two-handed job with the uh, knife, so it works very well. It works very well indeed, much safer. Right, so we're spreading away. As you can see here on the screen, I've now got a brown coloured field uh, and still a blue mark for where we're filling in. So that's sort of normal. Um, and then on here, we've got the normal display. But if you can see down here, it says 116 kilos a hectare being spread. Um, that's the current rate we're doing. So the top end of this field is really, really strong. There's a really good crop of oats. So we don't want to put too much more nitrogen on it because it will just fall over. Bumpy headland. And then I think what we'll find is as we go down um, and through the gully in the middle of the field down there, um, that will change back to 145. So hopefully I can show you that. We'll just have to see what happens when we get down there. There we are, it's changed. 145. So this bit here sits wetter over winter. Um, and it gets a bit more stress, I suppose, because it does sit in a bit more water. Whereas the, the tops of the field and the, the higher points, they always do a lot better. So I think it changes back to 116 in a minute uh, when we get down the other end of the field. There you are, it's gone back to 116. It's amazing, this technology. Now, there are, of course, lots of companies that will create um, prescription maps for you. I think Soils is the main one that people use, um, but there's loads. We're fortunate that we have um, the NDVI drone here that we use anyway for various things. Um, that we can create our own sort of plant health maps. Like I say, from those maps we can then free hand draw a um, prescription map on the John Deere software. So that was really easy. Me and Bruce did it last night. For these six fields it took about 10 minutes. Um, it's just a really simple way of doing variable rate spreading with, at the moment, with the price of fertilizer, um, one is a good thing, because obviously we're using slightly less, and two, we can really target the areas of the crop that need the fertilizer and perhaps lessen off the areas that don't need it. Um, because, for example, in these oaks, if we give them too much nitrogen, they're just gonna fall over anyway. Uh, and make it a pain in the backside to harvest. But it is working, which I am, I was gonna say I'm amazed at, but I, I, I knew we had the technology to do it, just having never done it, I didn't know how we were gonna get on trying to implement it. 
but it's good. I like it. Right, so I've just finished um, the biggest field we have here uh, into crop. Um, it's 6.37 hectares. So if I was spreading a flat rate of 145 kilos to the hectare uh, of nitram, that would equate to 923 kilos. If you can see that on there. So that's what I would have spread if I had spread flat rate. So with the variable rate and putting a little bit less on the good areas of crop, we've actually spread 848 kilos. So we've saved ourselves 80 odd kilos of nitram, which at about 700 pound a ton, you know, you soon you soon save a lot of money if you do that across across the farm. I'm well pleased that it is all working. I'm going to carry on and do the next couple of fields, and uh, yeah, that will take me till lunchtime. Right, we're cracking on with the fertilizer. I got one field left to spread. Um, I need to go into the grain store here. A go, go, go. Because I need one of these. So if you watch um, Cowley Hill Farm with Will, you'll have seen he had some of these recently. Uh, we got a couple, another one down there on the shelf. Uh, and what they do is allow you to open a bag of fertilizer from underneath. They have a slide on the bottom so you can shut it off so you can put exactly what you want in the bag and not have to worry about slicing open a whole bag when you don't want it all. Craig's going to do us the honours. Nice one. Right, so Craig has just helped us fill up the spreader. But it's playing silly buggers now on the uh, on the ice of us here. It's lost its signal apparently. Why do I look so looks like I'm in dark shed, but I'm not. That's better. So I just turned it off and on, done the old reset trick. Hopefully that sorts it out. See the spreader's loading up here. Normally all of these will go okay, and then, so that's good, and then you press home, that's better, yeah, so we put 200 kilos in, so we've got 565, oh, why does it keep doing this? So, see. so is your ladder up? You say yes it is. Right guys, I just finished spreading fertiliser, tractor and spreaders behind me there. We're in another one of our fields that is sort of a field of two halves. If you can see, it drops away quite steep down over a brow of the hill there where Gus is running off down the tram line. Um, the bottom of the field and the top of the field up here, sort of on the level, grows a really, really good crop. Uh, and then sort of on the bank where we lose a bit of soil, there's an old hedgerow run through. Um, it gets a bit thin, so that's the area we put um, the flat rate of N on. So it's had 145 kilos. The top and the bottom part, that's had the variable rate, so that's been cut down to about 116 kilos a hectare. So it'll be interesting to see whether the middle bit evens up with the rest of the field when it comes to harvest. Um, but it's just amazing to have the technology available to do it and actually to implement it now as well. So we'll keep an eye on it as we go. Probably now middle of May, June, July, probably another 11, 12 weeks we'll be in a combine in this hopefully. So I'm going to head back now and take the spreader off. Well, I'll wash it first, take the spreader off. Um, and then what I'll do if I have time is run a couple of loads of dung up to the off ground because John's up there spreading muck at the moment. So better head on and do that. Righto, so we have finished spreading. I've just washed the spreader off with the power washer. Um, so what I'm going to do now is back up to the workshop and spray it over with like an oil diesel mix. Um, it just helps preserve the paint and stop anything rusting um, and stop any water sitting anywhere it shouldn't be. I'm then going to drop the spreader off and then take the tractor back down to the wash bay and wash it because it is quite dirty. And we'll try and get it all ready for silaging next week. We'll put the carpet back in and those sorts of things. So yeah, that's where we're at at the moment. So first thing I want, a good pair of gloves. And then what I'm going to do is take our spray can that we have for the airline, which is this. It's actually about half full, so that'll probably do what I wanted to. But there's a mix in here of oil, diesel, and then what we do is we just stick the airline hose in, stick the hose in the bottom of it, like so, and we got a spray gun.
you get the picture. Right, that is uh, all oiled up. Hopefully you can see how shiny it is. Just means that no dirt will stick to that now um, whilst it's in the shed, any dust or anything. Um, just try to preserve it as best we can. Um, the old one uh, started to have things rust and go wrong on it. Um, it's all sorted now, but to prevent them happening in the first place, all the better. So we'll drop that off, and then I think we ought to give this a wash. Right guys, so I've just finished cleaning up the tractor. Now parked away in the shed next to the forager already for silage in next week. Craig's done a really good job of cleaning out this pit with a bucket brush this afternoon. So that's all ready to go. Forager's all ready to go. Um, just got to go mowing on Monday now, have some grass for it to gobble up. A couple other things we've done this afternoon. Um, I have taken all the um, screens in front of the fan and the radiator on this one out and blown them all out, blown out everything inside there so it's all nice and clean. Because when you go mowing, you suck up a lot of dust and it makes the tractor heat up quite a lot. So make sure they're all clean to start with. And also, how well you can see it, I don't know. But we put the carpet back in the tractor. That's when you know it's uh, summertime. Nice clean carpet in the tractor. Makes it a bit more comfy for Gus in there when he comes along for uh, tractor rides. I hope you've enjoyed today's video um, with the variable rate spreading of the fertilizer. It was new to me. I'm sure it was new to a lot of people. There'll be some people watching that have done it for a long time and wonder why we've never done it. But um, if anyone's got any questions about it, do let me know in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them um, as well as I can. Um, it works really well with the John Deere Starfire and John Deere Link. As I say, you can set up stuff on the PC in the office and send it straight to the tractor. You haven't got to take a USB stick or anything. But um, if anyone's got any questions about that, by all means ask, I'll try and help as best I can. Just about to take a picture of these on my Instagram. So if you're not already following me on Instagram, there's a link down below as well as Snapchat, Facebook, Twitter and TikTok and all the various things that uh, I'm on as well. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Loads and loads of stylish content to come. So I hope you're ready for that. I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheerio.